Hey guys, Silence Yell here. Welcome back to another Uta Macross video. So today's video is a bit more special. Um, it is going to be under the Uta Macross tutorial playlist, mainly because this video is all about, well, whatever that's written in the title below. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about how you can handle ticketing events in general. Um, it's gonna be a more detailed video as compared to the ones that I've done before in the past. Where whenever there's a new event, I will talk about how you can handle the event and all that kind of thing. But the information is basically all spread out here and there. So this video is basically a generic video compiling all of those information together. And of course, uh, to help anyone out there who actually needs the knowledge uh, or confirmation of whatever they are currently understanding of the event and of the game. So yeah, alright, let's talk about the common points within all three events at this point of time um, from the time the date stamp that I'm currently recording of this video the 6th of August 2018 if there is any updates for these events in the future I will definitely make a brand new um, video uh, talking about the changes and of course whatever that is still uh, similar from the past and yeah hopefully this information can be helpful to you guys understand the game in general and of course what you need to do and what kind of play style is beneficial for you um, especially to handle games like this that require a lot of time a lot of time let me let me emphasize on the word a lot all right so let's talk about the first common point all right let's tap into the mission tab and the first thing we want to take a look at is of course the events mission we're going to talk about the main events we're not going to look at the first anniversary event missions because this is not related to our topic today this although is un uh, related to the event that's currently going on but the missions inside do not appear alongside the main missions uh constantly so this is a no all right don't pay attention to this we're gonna talk about the main events mission all right so let's go into the tab all right so first few things you need to know is that there are a few categories of um, missions that needs to be cleared uh, during the time period of the event all right so each event take note take note of this very carefully each event lasts from seven days to eight days in total now the first day is usually a short period because the event usually starts uh, around the uh, 1 p.m. time in Japan. So the next day refreshes at well, 12 midnight in Japan. So if you've only got um, 11, no, not 11 hours, I would say 9 hours in total. Let's count. Uh, let's see. One. 1 p.m. in Japan, so it ends at 12 midnight. So, well, according to my timing, it starts at 2 p.m. and then it refreshes at 11 p.m. So that's nine hours in total. So, yeah, I'm not sure how the math goes, but okay. Supposedly, according to my world clock timing in my country, the event for the first day lasts only for nine hours. Now, these missions especially the daily ones that you see in the brackets these missions will refresh on the first day uh, after nine hours has lapsed into the event so it is very critical of you to play you know the event songs immediately to complete those missions before the day refreshes especially if you are living in another part of the world where the timing isn't so beneficial to your play um, as uh, regarding to the world clocks, um, hour differences, you know that kind of thing. It in Japan, it might be in the afternoon, but for you guys, you you guys may be sleeping, and you might sleep into the next day of the event. Hence, the daily missions may might end up, um, I would say, not in your grasp, <laughs> uh, which won't allow you to complete them, and then of course, you're gonna lose out on these wonderful zodiac medals that they are rewarding the players once they are cleared all right so with that said let's get down to the event mission itself all right i won't explain what the missions are because every day the missions are randomized they are changed 
So they are not a constant factor in terms of what we need to do. So we're going to talk about those missions that are normally constant in the event itself. Alright, so first one, okay. Now, take note, all these missions do have different levels of, uh, I would say, quantity requirements. Like this one here, you play the event song 10 times and clear. Now, once you clear this mission, all right, it will unlock the next level mission, basically, of a higher quantity of songs. Like, clear 20 songs, clear 30 songs, that kind of thing. So it's pretty much the same thing as we go down throughout all the mission variations. So I just need to take note. Once you've cleared this one, it will unlock a different quantity amount. Of course, whatever you have played before, like you've already cleared this 10 quantity, there it will retain in the upcoming version of the mission. And of course, you continue from there. Alright, so you don't have to waste a lot of time trying to complete all these missions, you just have to keep playing and you will basically automatically clear all the missions for yourself as long as you have met the requirements. Alright, so that's it, let's move on to the next one. So usually the next three missions are all related to the main event song itself. So like this current event, the song is called Wakure wa Ura Giranai. Now, as you can see in the bracket, the title of the song is there, all you have to take note is mix or rather all you have to do is just uh, mix and match, you know, the, the event song's name if you can't read Japanese. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So you just have to play the event song, score a rank of S and above 5 times and clear. Now, like I said, um, all you, with these kind of missions, the quantity will increase once you've cleared the first uh, line of um, task. And then you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling until you've cleared all of the missions of that particular um, version or yeah category of mission. So, all right, moving on to the next one. Event song, yeah, score 70,000 uh, 70, and above. So this one is pretty much the same thing uh, as the previous few. You just have to keep doing a better score. I think the highest that we've seen so far is like uh, 140,000, no actually it's 1 million and 400,000. So the Japanese, yeah, they, they use this kanji here as uh, 10,000. So this is actually 700,000 points. So yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Alright, so the last row, as you can see we have reached the last row. Now you take note, there is this word in English here. So basically what they're asking you to do is play the main event song under a difficulty that is mentioned here or above so you can actually play um, extreme or very hard and if you get a full combo you clear the mission so let's say for example the first line here says easy now you don't have to play easy to clear this uh, then move on to um, normal then hard then very hard then extreme no you can jump straight to play extreme if you're capable of it Alright, full combo extreme and it will unlock all the previous versions of difficulties just like that. So, yeah, so this is the most convenient mission so far, while the rest of them are pretty grindy. Yeah, um, the score one is pretty easy as well if you have a good uh, set of episode plates. Um, for new players, this might be a bit difficult because your plates might not be as strong to obtain the highest possible um, score rating that they require so yes this one new players are likely to uh, unable to complete just take note of that but the rest pretty much easy as long as you continuously play um, you should be able to clear all the missions just um, automatically all right so let's move on to the zodiac medals now as you can see the zodiac medals in the event missions are written here the quantity as well now Every month, the Zodiac medals change, which will affect the rewards under the Chaos Exchange, which is this tab here. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with Chaos Exchange as of now, yeah, there we go, some brief explanation. Okay, so basically, ever since two, three months ago, Dana has implemented two variations of five-star episode plates that are given in the Chaos Exchange. Where you can use your zodiac medals to actually exchange for free five star 
and evolve them to a six star episode play. All right, so these are pretty useful uh, in terms for free to play um, users of the game, especially if you don't want to spend money that kind of thing. So don't mind the loading because apparently my home Wi-Fi connection is pretty terrible uh, when it comes to my new iPhone 8 Plus. So I'm not too sure why is it like that. But anyway, guys. All right, here we go. So this is just an example. This is the current month's Chaos Exchange episode plates. So it's Keith, yeah, and here we go. I think the next one is um, nope, not this one. <laughs> Although that is pretty adorable. Okay, so it's no, not this one either. So it's this one. Okay, so yeah, Keith and Mikael. So yeah, there are two variations of 5 star episode plates you can exchange. Now, if you are a brand new player, I will highly recommend you guys to watch my videos whenever I release information about a brand new uh, event um, because I usually talk about episode plate details and whether it's worth pulling or exchanging medals for. Um, yeah, so pay attention to those videos, it will tell you basically which one is beneficial for you to spend your Zodiac medals that you uh, worked so hard on obtaining by playing the events itself, you know? So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Zodiac medals. Spend them wisely. Of course, you can actually exchange for the 4 star version and evolving them to a 5 star version if you wish to um, maybe obtain resources from the Zodiac exchange like the Lucky Stone and all this. But I will always highly recommend the episode plates, especially for new players because episode plates that are 6 stars fully evolved are pretty hard to come by, especially with terrible luck um, from the gacha that you require spending money on or basically taking a lot of time to save up the singing stones that is used for the yeah um, gacha itself. Alright guys, I apologize if you, you guys find the background a bit noisy because well, public transport is honking away uh, out in the streets and all that. But anyway guys, let's move on to the next point. Um, yeah, so the other common uh, point within missions itself is basically um, there is interactions between the, the divas. So if you go into the event hat, definitely I will mute the music here so because of copyright restrictions and all that. Yeah, so alright, so you did you just see that screen earlier? Alright, where the four tickets appear. Okay, that's the other thing that is very very important about the ticketing event. Uh, make sure you log into the event page itself because every day, every day, log in every day, I repeat again, log in every day. They will give four free tickets every day so you don't have to grind like crazy um, if you are just going to play casually you know so you can just pick up those four tickets and use them to clear your missions event missions itself so that's pretty awesome all right so if you take a look here it says event story in japanese so tap on it now if you have unlocked enough points these stories will be unlocked so each event uh, every month has a whole row of um, story that is exclusive to Uta Macross because these interactions between the divas from every generation are only exclusive to this game itself. It is not visible anywhere else, uh, it, not in the TV series, not in the OVAs, the movies, that kind of thing. No, it is just basically in Uta Macross itself. So if you can understand Japanese and read Japanese, this is a definite treat to you guys. Um, there are some of us out there in the fandom, um, especially if you guys are following us on the Facebook group Macross Space Time the Culture. The link is in the description below. So there's some of us who actually translate the stories for the fandom to read, you know, and to laugh and giggle, or even like share their thoughts on the interactions between the divas and stuff. So that's pretty fun. Alright, so moving on, let's take a look at the other tabs within the um, event page itself. Alright, so as you can see, 
Uh, if you're not familiar with this button, let me explain what it is first. This is a special button for certain songs. Now, so far there are only three songs out there with this button. And what does it do? Basically, it lets you switch between a uh, single diva mode or dual diva mode. Now, there is, of course, a song. There is so far only one other song. I won't mention what song it is. It's for you guys to find out. If you have played long enough, you probably know what I'm talking about. Alright, so there is another song that has a 3 diva mode. Yes, you heard me right. Basically, you have 3 different divas dancing in the background for that particular song. Alright, so there are so far 3 songs with this special button, so that's pretty much what it does. Uh, it doesn't change up any points that you gain from playing the live or anything. It's just a visual um, pleasure to see when you're playing the game itself. Uh, personally, for me, I do not have my diva dancing in the background because my phone is kind of old by now, so I have to switch it to a 2D mode. Um, so it just shows the episode plate image without the diva dancing in the background. So if I ever want to see the diva dance, I have to use the live, uh, live mode to take a look at the diva's um, cinematics and 3D CG rendering, that kind of thing. So anyways, let's move on. Alright, so the top button here it's the ranking for the event. Alright, so you can take a look at the ranking here. I probably have no ranking here because my this account, this brand new account, has not played the event itself. If not, you can actually see the ranking within your your own um, your own score, you know, with the world. And then of course you can arrange them to like um, view the first to how many placing, first to 100, 100 to 500. You know that kind of thing so you can actually arrange them accordingly then of course there is the friend ranking tab here so if you have friends in your game so uh, the people that you add, added by code you can see their score and then of course you can compare yourself with them you know uh, to see who's actually doing better or not so then of course there's this uh, song ranking as well but since i've not played the event at all so that's why there is nothing here for you guys to see so anyway guys this is not so important because you can actually view everything from here. Now, let me explain what this thing is here. Alright, so the top row definitely as you can see the item is there. This is the quantity of tickets you have on hand. So the next row with the big fat zero here, alright, this is your total accumulated points. So whenever you play finish a life, there is a certain amount of points given to you. Alright? So that point is accumulated and to add it into a gigantic large sum of numbers uh, which it will tell you basically how many points you currently have in total and of course well once you've cleared all the rewards all right i'll explain what the rewards are later um these points basically become redundant <laughs> because you don't really need to see them anymore unless you're comparing points with the top 1000 or higher ranking um, or rather in between first place to top 1000 so if you're trying to aim for a certain rank yes these points this individual value points will be very crucial in terms of you know um, telling yourself like how much effort you need to push forward to reach certain rank uh, if you are planning to go for maybe top 100 top uh, 500 top 1000 that kind of thing so yeah anyways the ones here with the three dashes is your ranking placing so if you're aiming for top 100 top 1000 you can see your rank right here so that's why i said um this tab is pretty redundant because everything you need is all um right here in this rectangular um page of details anyways moving on now what is this point here that says 100 points now this points or these digits here is basically the amount of points that you need to collect from playing alive to obtain this item image here so as you can see you can actually unlock singing stones now how do you know what items there are to unlock well this is what this tab is on the right for so the second tab on the right let's tap it all right and you can see the entire row of items that you can actually unlock from the event itself. So normally, 
you know, my suggestion to anybody out there is to put in effort and collect everything here. So the maximum amount of points that you actually need, or rather I should, I should say it's actually minimum amount of points you actually need to unlock everything is stated here. So basically you need 300,000 points. Now on my main account as of today, I've already completed all these um, rewards. So tr I've already gotten more than 300,000 points on my main account. I'm trying to aim for a top 1,000. But sadly to say, I'm still not within the top 1,000 even after clearing 300,000 points. <laughs> so if you guys want to know how difficult it is to obtain top 100 position in Uta Macross ticketing event, um, I'll leave the video where I've discussed and share my uh, thoughts about aiming for top 100 uh, in a video. Uh, the link will be in the description down below as well. So, and I'll also put it up in the iCard in the top right hand corner of this uh, video. If you guys want to just click and move on to that video to listen uh, and come back maybe to this video later on. Alright guys, if you don't wish to obtain everything, well, because honestly, the Zodiac medals at the end are very tempting because it's like 1,500 Zodiac medals right there, which is very awesome um, because if you're aiming to obtain those free episode plates from the Chaos Exchange like I mentioned earlier, you will definitely need all of the Zodiac medals you can obtain as much as possible. So if you really do not want to, the highly recommended point factor that I usually recommend anybody out there, especially free to play players, is to reach um, this episode plate. Now ticketing events is the only event that actually give out free 5 star episode plates that evolve to a 6 star one. Now how do you obtain the second copy to evolve this 5 star into a 6 star plate? Basically if you look at the second tab here, ranking, all right, straight away you can see the ranking rewards give you another copy of the episode plate but of course top 100 you get five copies instead of one now the rank the minimum rank that you want to attain to get another copy of the five star is actually top 1000 where it only gives you one copy of the five star plate so top 1000 that's where i'm, I'm pushing myself currently to obtain top 1000 to get the one more copy of the five star to have it evolve fully just for the image itself because I, I I want to collect the images of the episode plate. Yeah. So if you're if you're feeling hardworking and all that then of course you can go for top five hundred you know and of course top one hundred if you're feeling very ambitious. You know but it is a very very strenuous and challenging road to take. Alright so looking at this current tab for ranking there is another tab here. Now this is the event high score ranking. Of course, you play the main song of the event and then of course you set up your diva team in a way to handle high score. Now we'll talk about setting up the high score team later on but I'll just give you a brief example. If you have played any high score event before for veterinarian players, you will know how difficult it is to actually obtain first place. <laughs> so yeah, because um, usually the top, I would say the top um, 500 to first place are whalers of the game. So if you don't know the term whalers, basically it's people who are tossing physical money like water. Yes, there are people out there with insane amount of money uh, tossed into the game. Um, mostly Japanese, I think, because I've seen uh, quite a few of them and the high scores they actually obtained um, for this event for top 10, top 10 alone, it's almost close to 4 million in value. Top high score, top 10, 4 million, you know, around there. So, yeah. I, I just barely made it to 2 million with my episode plates and I've been playing a year and I don't really toss in money like a whale. Uh, I do toss in money monthly, you know, like once a month that kind of thing unless it's a really really discounted price like we currently went through in the first anniversary 
uh, discount sale and all that kind of thing. So anyway, guys, let's move on to the next part. Um, yeah, so if you're wondering what this pet is, this is a shortcut to the e events missions. So it's pretty um, awesome to have, you know, especially if you just want to claim the mission rewards just like that without going through all the um, confusing tabs here and there. And of course, what is this blue tab? Well, it's not part of the event, but it's part of every single song in Old Time Across. If you tap it, it basically brings up um, the details of the song. So give my phone some time to load because I don't know what's wrong with the internet connection with my phone. <laughs> anyway guys, here it is. So straight away you can see where does this song come from, which album it comes from. Then the artist that performed the song, then of course the songwriter and all the other stuff. Alright, so the other thing that is important is actually this blue tab. So if you tap it, you can see like, alright, the divas. So currently this new account only has one diva, so I have Makina unlocked. And yeah, her proficiency level is of zero right now for the song. So if you guys are planning to level up proficiency, um, yeah, I highly recommend you to level up all the divas you currently own to proficiency level 3 for every new song that appears. Why do I say that? Mainly because, well, I have not made a video for it, so I'll explain it here in detail first. Then of course, um, whenever I do a video talking about diva proficiency in full detail, there is, there is a, I would say, a not so detailed version of that. Uh, that I made in the past, so you can actually look for that. Uh, I think it's in the YouTube, uh, the Uta Macross tutorials playlist as well. Uh, you can have a rough listen to that first. Um, if not, just wait up for a fully detailed version of uh, um, talking about uh, Diva proficiency and why is it necessary to do so. Anyway guys, let me talk about it now. Alright, Diva pro proficiency basically is the level of your Diva uh, related or linked to your level of your diva. Now what happens when you level up your diva's proficiency for a particular song? Now the max level for proficiency for a song is level 5. What happens when you reach level 3? Um, basically the diva's proficiency unlocks another song's um, limitations you know to their proficiency level. When you reach level 4 of a uh, song's proficiency, it gets locked up unless you unlock that other song that they require you to play and the diva's name, or rather the diva in particular, their level's proficiency for that other song is also unlocked to level 3. Hence why I give the suggestion, always unlock your diva's proficiency to level 3 whenever a new event comes out. Or a new song that is released because you don't want to end up like oh uh why is there a lock on my diva's proficiency bar at level four what should i do you know so to avoid such hassle just level up all your diva's proficiency to level three for every new song that they release all right so okay um let's talk about the episode plates from events and gachas all right so you can see that you know all the events episode plates are here if you want to know what they are and what they do just tap on them basically the skills and all this are all here but they're in japanese so like i said earlier in the video if you want to find out what the episode plates do um watch my videos whenever i release uh, when or whenever an event is released I will definitely make a video regarding the episode plates that are in the event itself within the Chaos Exchange if it has been refreshed and of course the um, episode plates within the gacha banners that you can actually pull from. Now I don't usually explain the 3 star and 4 star episode plates because usually those aren't as uh, helpful unless they come with something special so then I will mention about it. That's where you need to take note. Okay, this episode plate is useful in some way. Alright, so guys, let's take a look at the gacha banner. Um, yeah, so every event, most of the time, 
Um, they come with two uh, two gacha banners related to the event. That means two different characters will have new costumes that you can actually use in the event. And of course, something special will happen. So yeah, so the the, the banners currently for today have changed. Um, previously, before Sharon Gnome's banner was here, um, it was Kaname's banner. Kaname was the first diva that started this event, hence the banner for the event shows Kaname instead of Nikumo. Nikumo is the secondary diva related to the event itself, hence her gacha comes out later. And usually, how do you know which one came first? Well, the first gacha banner that releases for the event tends to be an episode played for the center position. You know, so if you guys aren't familiar with all the terms that I'm using right now, do hold up and wait for a video that I'll be releasing in the future talking about the full breakdown of episode plates in Uta Macross. Um, currently, I have not done a video about that because I am kind of short of time. I am actually um, doing something else in the works along with all these videos. So I'm really, really short on time plus I have a full-time job. So guys, uh, do pardon me on the lack of information here and there because it's really difficult and really tiring to compile all these videos and information for you guys out there. And yeah, I'm not earning a single cent from all this. So if you guys want to support me some way or somehow, do let me know in the comment section or on Facebook. Uh, if you want to send your appreciation and all this also in some way, do let me know. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, chat, uh, chat up with you guys on how you can do so. Uh, I'm still planning ways on trying to set up a Patreon if you guys want to help support me uh, financially and all that. Uh, but yeah, some uh, words of appreciation is always, always welcome. It helps calm my soul and feel a bit loved. Uh, you know, like the people who actually watch my content actually appreciate the stuff that I do. But anyway guys, let's put that aside for now <laughs> and move on with the uh, rest of the important information. So. The other things that are very common in all the event is basically whenever you equip a brand new costume on the diva from said gacha banner like Kaname's or Mikumo's right now that you see the bikinis that they are currently wearing, the swimsuits they are wearing a special thing will happen within the event song itself or when the song is added permanently into Uta Macross and you actually put them uh, to use in the normal play these special scenes do occur as well. It is retained within the game itself permanently once the song has been added permanently into the listing of songs that we can play. So for Kaname and Mikumo currently, when they wear their swimsuit costume, um, a special stage will appear. And of course, yeah, the dance moves and all that will be a bit slightly different. The camera angles will be shot here and there differently. So yeah, that's a special thing that is uh, notable within every single event itself. You know, sometimes uh, it's regard uh, related to the Valkyrie, sometimes it's related to the Diva's costume, and sometimes there is some, um, I would say, snippets or what is that term called again? Um, you know, secrets that can be unlocked. Um, I can't recall the term. <laughs> Never mind, guys. Uh, so yeah, like let's say for example, Basara tends to be the odd one out because uh, he's the only male uh, character in the line of divas, uh, and sadly to say, he is not considered a diva. He is just the divas and Basara. <laughs> so that's how Uta Macross has phrased Basara into the game. He is just and Basara. So <laughs> uh, yeah, Basara tends to have very unique special things happening to him whenever he's added into a song. So yeah, try and figure out what they are. It is That's the fun part about the whole Uta Macross thing. So alright, we are done with the common points and let's move on to the main points for the ticketing event which will not be valid to other events in the game itself. Alright guys, so let's talk about how to obtain tickets to play the event songs. As you can tell, I'm on my main account and of course my remaining ticket count is insanely high. I have no time to play. 
<laughs> so that's the problem I'm facing right now. Anyways, um, yeah, so as you can see, the songs at the top of the play button, there is this blue icon. Uh, basically, that's what it says um, to know that um, yeah, you can play this song to obtain tickets. So as long as you play any song that's outside the event, um, you are able to play uh, for, for tickets. Alright, so how do you play for tickets? Now let's say for example I've been playing um, I've been playing the Here the Universe just to obtain tickets and of course what is my team like? Well first of all you can see that my shortcut tab has been set to luck because luck, luck is important to obtain tickets. Alright, so choose your friend that has the best amount of luck. So this plate has a plus 13 value. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering how do you obtain luck on an episode plate, so let's tap on this guy's plate. Okay. Oh, you can't see it here, so never mind. Let's let's use ours or mine. Alright, so as you can see, this whole team has episode plates with luck on them. So yeah, you can see plus 10, plus 13, plus 13, 9, 9, 13, 11. Then if you see my luck value, it's at 111. Alright, so the higher the luck, the better your results at the end of the life. Alright, so let's take a look at how the episode plate is able to obtain luck itself. So if you look at the plate's power up value, okay, straight away you notice that this is the secret board and my secret board has plus. 13. So straight away if you evolve or rather you fully obtain all the maximum copies of extra plates um, which is yeah 13 yeah 13 no actually the highest amount that a five star fully evolved plate can go uh, we're talking about a four star evolving to a five star well the highest it can go is a plus 20 and for a six star a fully evolved 5 star plate, um, it can go to a maximum of plus 25. So of course, the higher the rarity of an episode plate, the higher the luck value it can obtain. So right now, this episode plate is only at a plus 13 value, which is pretty, pretty awesome already. Um, of course, of how to obtain this? Well, this is for the upcoming event that's uh, coming right after this event. So usually after ticketing events, you will have the Kuji event. That's how you obtain a plus 13 episode plate. But that's for another video. So look forward to that video if you're wondering how you can ob obtain a plus 13 value episode plate. Anyway guys, yes, to obtain a ticket from the live, you need a full team of uh, well, episode plate with luck. Now why is it so? Okay. Luck value releases a special note within a, a live or a song when being played. Okay, this special note, like I will show here in the short clip, is a yellow crystal note. Do take note of this. Now, of course, the higher value of your luck, which like my team here has, at 111, um, 111 value, the amount of tickets I usually get is 3 to 4. I will show you a screenshot here where I obtained 4 tickets. Now, how is it possible? Well, basically, if you count the value, okay, um, amount of tickets, I have 4 with the amount of luck. So, if 4 divide by 100, maybe, uh, basically, you need about 25 luck um, to increase one yellow note. So that's probably how you can calculate um, the uh, production value of a yellow note. So probably if I want to make my um, 4 ticket value permanent, I probably might have to get about 125 luck. Uh, that's when I might actually start getting uh, 5 tickets per song, you know, that kind of thing. So this is how you set up to actually um, obtain tickets from a live or a normal live. Alright, so with that said, what I would highly recommend anyone to do is, you know this unit set button, tap it. This is how you can quick save and quick load your teams 
uh, in between plays, especially when you are short of time. So as you can see, I've named my luck set of divas here. And of course, if you want to save them, you just press this one here and it will tell you to save. So it will ask you, do you want to rewrite or uh, overwrite your current team of diva save? Then you say yes or no. Then this button here, beside it, is to withdraw the team, you know, uh, for quick switching around uh, in, in case of uh, urgency or lack of time to play. You know, that kind of thing. All right. So there is another song that you can play other than the normal tabs that uh, that shows the different generations of Macross. Under the event here, the daily resource event songs can also produce out tickets as you can see here at the top. But I highly do not recommend anyone to obtain tickets from these songs. During the weekends, you have three different songs instead of one. The weekdays, you only have one song like you can see on my screen right now. And yeah, I do not highly recommend you to play these songs to obtain tickets and here is why I will show you guys a screenshot here this is a screenshot from this uh, event and the chances of these yellow notes changing into tickets is extremely low it's worse than playing on an easy difficulty of a normal song because the priority of these songs are to give you resources and that is not what you want for the ticketing event. Alright, so you heard me say worse than the easy difficulty. Why do I say that? Because the difficulty does matter when it comes to obtaining tickets. So, what is the best optimal difficulty for anyone to play to obtain the best chance of a yellow note turning into a ticket? The difficulty that I will highly recommend is between hard and very hard. Well, there's only two difficulties there. <laughs> yeah, so why not easy and normal? Well, the easier it is, the lower the chance of a yellow note turning into a ticket. Now, does the luck value on the episode plates matter when it comes to turning a yellow note into a ticket no sadly no the luck value on the episode plates only affect the amount of yellow notes appearing within the song that you're playing now with that said okay if i were to play extreme with this full set of episode plates with this luck value yes i will still be able to obtain three to four yellow notes within the song all right if i were to play easy with this set i will also be able to obtain three to four yellow notes within the song but the um percentage of chance that this yellow note uh will turn into a ticket basically it all matters down on the difficulty of the song hence why i recommend hard to very hard very hard well the chances are almost i would say a close to 90% that it is a ticket. Uh, there, there are a few times when probably I've obtained like two tickets and one uh, rare material or like three tickets and one rare material. There are very rare chances that I actually obtain like one ticket and three rare materials. Very rare uh, under the very hard difficulty. But under hard there is still a chance that it's a 50-50 split. Like um, two rare materials, two tickets, that kind of thing. So, if you're the kind of person who is not very good with music games, I will recommend playing hard mode because at least it will still give you some kind of capability to go up against those um, veterinarian players or those who wail on the game. Um, if you are not familiar with the term wailing, like I mentioned before earlier in the video, yeah, um, do pay close attention because this kind of terms is very crucial um when it comes to gaming in any game because you need to understand what the community is talking about uh to to really push yourself to play at your optimal best uh even in the most well unbeneficial manner i guess in terms of time and scheduling for your life uh like myself so <laughs> it's pretty difficult you know playing utam across in this manner um the most effective way for myself, I've been 
calculating, test trying. That's why I'm able to write out all these notes for you guys and to produce all these videos for you guys as well. So hopefully if you guys appreciate it, uh, do let me know in the comment section down below or maybe even hit the like button. Yeah, so... Um, Alright, so that's pretty much all the recommendations I can say uh, for you guys in terms of obtaining tickets for this event itself. Let's move on to using those tickets on the songs itself and what you need to pay attention to. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about the actual playing of the event itself. Um, this is where it gets a bit tricky because you need to have, um, I would say, the most three different kind of team setups right now. Um, one of them is your luck and then of course right now we have the main songs team um, that you need to set up. You either set up for high score or you set up for points. Now, why I say you set up for points? Because if you are the kind of person like myself who don't really aim for the high score factor, I've literally just given up because um, as you can see I'm in a placing of uh, 1082 for high score. Uh, if I want to aim for a better reward plate for the high score, I definitely need to aim um, yeah, for like top 1000 which will give me this plate but right now I'm here where everybody else is. So the struggle for the other 82 placing might be a bit difficult for me because my episode plates may not be that good to aim for the best. Uh, if you're wondering what my high score is currently, well, you can see at the bottom here. I have like a value of 2 million, uh, 100,000. Yeah, so that's where I stand right now at the 1082 placing. Oh well, yeah. Alright, so let's talk about setting up your team first um, before we go down to any other topic because the team setting up is actually the most important thing uh, when it comes to playing the event songs itself. Alright, let's first of all talk about setting up a team for high score. So let's tap this. Alright, so I will talk about this later on so we don't have to pay attention to all this uh, for now. Okay, alright, so let's choose any friend as of now. Let's talk about team setup. Alright, so as you can see here, I have Freya, Ranka and Cheryl uh, still in the luck setup. I do have a pre-setup team for luck, I mean for high score. This is my high score team, then P is for points. So if I were to aim for points, of course, therefore I will use this team. Now, as you can see, the team value is very different. My high score team is way higher in points total. And of course the the um, episode plate affecting the I would say the overall average on the songs itself. So yeah, and this is my team for my points that I want to obtain all the rewards and push myself higher in the overall rankings. Yeah, the point team is actually more important than the high score team. That's why I went with the high score team first because it is probably the easiest thing you can set up yet. The point team is very difficult to obtain but we will get to it shortly. So let's talk about the high score team first. So I'm just going to show you a rough setup how you can do it with my current team. Freya in the center, Ranka at the side, Shara at the side. Alright, so we're going to change the center plate. We're going to change this tab to active, so it's on active already. We're going to have 5 stars, 6 stars only shown to you. And of course, we're going to tap Freya as the main diva. So they're going to show you all the plates related to Freya. And of course, first of all, we have to scroll down and look for the icon for score. So here it is. This is the icon for score. Look for the yellow music note. The first plate shown here is usually the best out of the among all the rest of the episode plates. So we're going to equip this. Okay, what I'm going to show you guys right now is the lazy man's version of setting up a high score team. If you want a full detailed way of setting up a high score team, I have a video done uh, quite some time ago. I'll leave that video in the link description below. Or if not, you can check the icard in the top right hand corner as well. 
for that video if you're interested to find out more. Alright, so here's the lazy man way, we're going to do the auto setup. But because I've already changed Freya's center plate, we're going to highlight this. This will um, prevent the auto setting to change the center plate, you know. So everything else will change except the center plate. So we're going to click OK, make sure it's all, because this song is a rainbow colored song, so that's why it's under all. And of course, selected as a best total score. Then press OK. So immediately they will shuffle in all the episode plates regarding to high score and then of course here we go. Now if I want to compare whether my um, previously set up team is actually better um, than the one I currently have, you can see the points. So as you can see this Freya team is actually better. So I might give it a try in the future once I'm done with uh, pushing myself to top 1000 maybe I can try and obtain a better high score to get a better high score reward um, but that is after I push myself into the top 1000 ranking alright so that's my hint to you guys as well alright so make sure you change the costumes as well um, for the divas to help boost the um, best possible points on your setup so let's say here you can see that the um, the soul and charm is of a higher value so make sure you wear costumes that is actually boosting soul and charm because the voice is not the main factor in terms of scoring but it does play a part as well but most of the score comes from soul and charm so make sure you change the costumes for the divas to fit the theme of the song Okay, so let's talk about setting up a diva uh, team for points. What do you need? Well, sadly to say, the thing that you need is actually episode plates. And let's take a look at the um, the team that I have preset right now. Okay, I'm going to pull this up. Okay, here we go. So this is the team of the divas I use and the episode plates attached to boost the points that I'll gain from every single live that I play within the event tab itself. Now, previously I did not have this episode bonus. What do you need to do when you have uh, to obtain this episode bonus is basically equip episode plates related to each of the 5% shown here. So each image is equivalent to 5% boost. So you only need to equip one of the episode plates um, that is mentioned within the, the picture itself. So either one, if you have duplicates of the same i mean if you have many uh if you have all three let's say for example under this image you will still only be given a five percent boost so i highly only recommend equipping one of the uh, shown images within the tab okay so i did not equip any of this because the um the rarity value of the episode plates is too low and it's kind of pointless i might as well go with a more useful episode plate and of course, this one I do not have because I don't have Mikumo's um, bikini episode plate. Alright, now let's talk about the importance of a particular episode plate. If you guys have gotten used to all my gacha videos right now, I've always emphasized on one thing every time when I talk about episode plates. And we are talking about this tab. Now, straight away you notice that one of them is highlighted. And why is this particular episode plate important? Well, it's because of this special note, which is the item note. Now, episode plates providing special notes points, the points to uh, appear special notes, is very crucial for this event. Um, this event highly re uh, relies on item notes. So these notes with the green or bluish crystal, aqua crystal, I don't know what color it is, but you know, as long as you see this note, tap it in the live itself. Do not miss on it. So with that said, I highly recommend you to play a difficulty of the event song that you can full combo on. Make sure you full combo it. Even if it's under hard, very hard or extreme, make sure you can full combo it or at least clear the song and not miss any of the item notes. You can, you can actually just pass the song with a clear, not full comboing it is fine, but make sure you're able to survive the song and tap all the item notes that actually come down. And well, the other important thing is actually activating Cho Utahime Moro. 
because Cho Utahime mode um, summons up more item nodes um, at, uh, after the battle of the Valkyrie. So, yeah, take note of all these important points. Episode plates with special item nodes. Very important when it comes to ticketing event. That's why now if I show you this tab, it shows you that my special note for the item has a 45 value. It means all the episode plates I have that are currently with this special note is 1, 2, oh let me just show you guys, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 4 plates with this special notes imbued in them. So that's why it has a 45 value. Alright. Now, what happens when you have this extra value for the item notes? Well, for example, I'm going to show you guys a screenshot here. This is a screenshot of a song that I played uh, without the item boost. I'm going to show you the details of the team here. It proves that I did not have an item boost. And then, of course, the screenshot of the results. Um, the results is that I only can obtain 46 item notes within a full uh, full playthrough of very hard. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's a cleared or a full combo, I only can obtain 46 notes normally for a very hard song. Now with the item value at 45, I can obtain 4 more item notes within the very hard live song itself. So here is a screenshot of that result with 50 item notes obtained at the end of the live. Alright, so right now I'm going to show you another two screenshots here that will compare the total points obtained um, with each playthrough. So the top one is actually the, um, the set that doesn't have the item boost and the bottom one is the result of the item boost. Now with all this said, you can see why it's important to actually have a team set up for item uh, point get, uh, gathering because points in this uh, event is very important to push yourself into the top 1000 ranking if you wish to obtain that last copy of 5 star plate to evolve it into a 6 star. Whew, that's a lot of words to talk about. Okay. Um, team building aside, let's move on to the beginning of the entire event song when I first entered here. Alright, let's tap this. What does this say? Basically, it allows you to decide how many tickets you want to use for this live playthrough. So you can choose to have one ticket used only, two tickets used only, or four tickets used only. Why is this an option? Well, it's basically for people who do not have time to play. So using multiple tickets at one go is a time saver. Um, but at the same time, it is a bit of a tactical thing um, when it comes to playing professionally or playing the most efficiently uh, efficient method. I don't know. So, why is one ticket and two ticket important as well? One ticket, well, remember when I was saying that you need to level up your Divas proficiency to level 3? If you do not want to spend too many tickets leveling up your Divas, one ticket is the way to go. Use the least amount of tickets to level up your entire team of Divas to level 3 uh, proficiency and then you can move on to using the rest of your tickets for point gathering or even high score obtaining. So yes, with that said, you can actually use one ticket to obtain a good high score if you want to conserve as many tickets as possible for point gaining. So 4 tickets used at one go is the best optimal number to gain more points. You know in the most efficient way possible but of course do take note if you fail obtaining um cho utai hime mode while using four tickets well you're wasting four tickets altogether at one go as well <laughs> so it's a double-edged sword uh so play smart choose your moves wisely uh and yeah uh two tickets 
I would say it's probably used to clear the last few remaining tickets that you can obtain uh, probably on the last day of the event uh, so yeah it's probably one of the ways that you can efficiently use your remaining tickets I guess <laughs> all right so yeah okay let's move on to the next tab basically it's choosing your friends now when it comes to high score challenges you're gonna set to total or you can actually set to rarity now choosing your friends is a very important point um, so befriending people with good episode plates is also another thing uh, that will help you in high score challenges now since episode plates that affect the center position and do not have a good life support uh, well sadly to say those plates are not the kind of plates that you want to choose uh, as your friend plates so you you need to be knowledgeable of which episode plates are life support episode plates that means plates that actually boost your score in the life position so i have my friend here ella she has an episode plate all right that is a life support plate so uh, yeah, so I can actually use her to obtain a good high score if I was using my high score team. Now, if I was using my points earning team, I wouldn't be using her episode plate, sadly to say. So I will probably refresh. I will refresh until I, I see an episode plate that helps boost my point value. So this Mikumo plate, remember I did not have a Mikumo plate to... Uh, obtain that plus five percent bonus i can use it now oh the date changed okay guys i apologize um for the cut in video um because we passed the timing where the game day or the, rather the day refreshed into a new day so i couldn't explain more about the mikumo plate but i will continue off from there if i were you to choose a friend with a mikumo plate or a kaname swimsuit uh, episode plate um it will give me that plus five percent bonus that i was lacking and of course in the end it will still give me that boost in points which i want so choosing episode plates like those um will definitely be beneficial um so always befriend people who uh, have those plates or sometimes you know the whenever you refresh the computer system will actually randomly toss in a few uh wild players out there that actually has those episode plates if not what's the next best thing next best thing <laughs> i'm fumbling i'm tired i've been recording this video for over two hours guys so uh, uh please bear with me uh we're almost at the end okay so what's the next best best episode plate to choose well remember those episode plates that have the special notes so this friend has one of them if you can remember all the episode plates that has the special notes, that would be fantastic. So episode plates with special notes also will help boost the appearance of those item notes. So yes, definitely select those. These plates are definitely what you want to get uh, as your friend selection. Uh, so be mindful of who you select as your friends um, in terms of playing the lives. I mean, you don't have to kick out your best friends who are not playing the games. You can actually befriend more people who has better episode plates or uh, even kick out those that have been stagnant for too long you know that kind of thing and get new friends <laughs> in the game oh uh, that's just cruel but uh, yeah you have to be cruel in order to play well <laughs> okay guys so this is pretty much all i have to say about using tickets i'm playing the event now the last bit of this video is the most important information I can probably give you to play effectively and efficiently in the ticketing event itself. So guys, please listen to me closely. Uh, so for this section, we're probably going to head to the um, <laughs> homepage. So see you guys there. Okay, so we're here on the homepage. Uh, let's talk about what you can actually effectively do to play well in the ticketing event itself. So guys, here you go. Listen carefully. 
always play when energy is available. So, when you have energy and, well, um, it is not maxed out your energy bar, play whenever possible. Because here's tip number two. Do not let your energy bar max out. That means, no, you shouldn't have any other reason to have your energy, uh, energy bar maxed out. When is the only time acceptable? Well, when you're sleeping. <laughs> so guys, that's what I have been literally doing. Uh, sorry, I've been literally doing for the past one year of Uta Macross. If you're wondering how I always maintain top 1000 ranking or so, uh, there are some times where I actually went below 1000 because I, I, I really felt too exhausted or I can't be bothered, you know, that kind of thing. But most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, I'm always in top 1000. So yeah, that's pretty much how I got to top 1000. I never let my energy bar max out like you can see at the top corner here. It's still refreshing. Always let the refresh counter count down. Now with that said, if you're planning to aim for top 100, top 500 and you're planning to use energy ethers and singing stones to refresh your energy, make sure you refresh them only when you are at the energy value of the song difficulty that you're going to play straight away after refreshing your energy. So if you can't understand what I'm saying, let's say for example you're gonna play a very hard song which requires 15 energy. Now that said, you need to have below 15 energy remaining on your energy bar. Let's say for example I have at um, 13 energy, I'm short of 2 energies to play this song. I'm gonna tap the song play button and they will ask me do you want to use an energy actor or 10 singing stones to refresh your energy uh, of your current max energy value? Then you say yes when you play the song. Now, once you play the song, okay, they're gonna uh, reduce your total value of energy that you currently have including um, the leftover energies uh, before refreshing you're gonna minus off that 15 points the total value will now be reduced below the maximum value of your energy bar so therefore the the refresh counter will always be ticking continuously yes that's how you effectively make use of your refresh counter and of course if you want to refresh your energy here's a very neat neat trick uh, make sure that the count value goes into full 3 minute value before tapping the refresh button. That's how you effectively make use the, of the refresh counter. Guys, I'm giving you a lot of pointers that probably I shouldn't be giving you because I'm gonna I'm gonna end up with having a lot of uh, rivals in, in Ultra Macross after this video. Um, yeah, so I'm helping the community at the same time. I'm, I'm destroying my chances of getting top one thousand. Uh, maybe in the future events. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about is, I do not recommend anyone out there to aim for top one hundred. Especially for free to play uh, players out there, unless unless you really got tons of energy ethers or singing stones to burn. If not, really, I'd rather you use the energy ethers and singing stones on the upcoming event, which is the Kuji event, where you can obtain a five star fully evolved plate with a plus thirteen luck value that will help you out in the next ticketing event. Whew! <laughs> Guys, seriously, if you want to know why I do not recommend top 100 placing, please watch my video. I will have that video link in the description down below and of course the top right hand corner of this video of the iCard. Please click and watch that video where I struggle to obtain top 100 myself. Alright guys, so the last... Um, pointer I probably will give to you guys is 
<sighs> all right guys so that's all the help i can give you guys on the ticketing event hopefully everything has been useful and uh, it, it took me a while to write up all the notes because i have to make sure that i didn't miss out any important data i want this video to last uh, as long as possible until the, probably the next update towards the ticketing event itself so guys thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble non-stop i don't know how long the video is gonna end up probably maybe close to an hour long this is gonna be a very long tutorial video but it's for your own good so guys with all of this said if you like what you see and hear, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Utah Macross videos. Guys, thank you guys once again. If you have reached all the way to the end of this video, I can't say thank you enough in every video. And I'll see you guys in the next Utah Macross video somewhere on the channel. Bye!